What's going on everybody, it's JB and I'm back again to host the Zeal Cigar Review and uh, I kind of wanted to do something a little interesting today, not something I normally do with um, Connecticut cigars, but uh, there's a, a really interesting mead that I want to pair with a Connecticut cigar and see uh, kind of how it goes. Normally I pair coffee, today we're doing some kind of a barrel aged mead and uh, we'll find out what the heck's going on all next on the Zeal Cigar Review. All right, so uh, I was on a, a hunting trip for uh, beer, a beer hunting trip, and I uh, was looking for something called the A1 Pilsner, um, which my buddy Grant has been telling me about for a very long time. And while on the hunt for the A1 Pilsner, we stumbled across this limited edition um, barrel-aged celestial uh, artigi, artigiary, artesian mead. Uh, and, um, this one is some kind of like an orange cream, um, honey wine with vanilla and orange peel bourbon barrel aged by Celestial Artesian Meadery here in Carefree, Arizona. So this is actually a local meadery, um, barrel aged, supposed to taste like creamsicle. So I want to pair this with the Primordial Connecticut. This is one of my favorite Connecticut's. Um, originally nicknamed the cookie dough. It's kind of like smoking cookie dough batter without the sugar. It's like somebody made cookies and forgot to put the sugar in. It's one of my favorite Connecticut's, one of the few Connecticut's I really enjoy smoking, but normally I smoke it with a cup of coffee. Today I'm gonna try it with this barrel aged uh, creamsicle mead and we're gonna see how it pairs together. I doubt I'm gonna get pancakes, but you never know. Uh, and there's only one way to find out, and you know what we gotta do. We gotta... And smoke. I don't normally light with matches, but for whatever reason, these last few videos, I've really uh, kind of felt like doing it, so... Um, I have fun. It's fun. So right at first light, you get that kind of... Um, little bit of a pepper spice. Very light, like a one and a half. You get that little bit of like earthiness, but then you get that kind of sweetness that comes through and you're kind of that doughy sweetness that comes through on the primordial. Mm. If you're not retrohaling this cigar, you're not gonna get the entirety, entire sweetness of this first gen Cuban seed wrapper grown in Nicaragua. Um, it's very, very, very good. The name of the cigar is kind of funny. It was interesting. When when it was originally being named, there were names being tossed around like unbastardized, unadulterated, because of the gen because of the first generation Cuban seed that was grown in Nicaragua from this wrapper leaf. And uh, eventually uh, the name settled on Primordial, which is kind of cool. Um, the lion really doesn't have much to do with that other than maybe being a little bit of a primal creature. Um, I guess you could say that it's grown from the king of tobacco, if you believe that that is Cuban seed. Mm. Plenty of smoke, a little bit of earthy doughiness, some sweetness, very good Connecticut. Definitely one that any I think anybody could enjoy, even if you're not normally a Connecticut smoker. I think this adds just a little bit um, to keep you interested. Unless you really hate sweetness, then I would probably say it's not your thing because it does have a little bit of like a um like a doughy sweetness like you forgot to put all the sugar in it but you know we don't want to know just what the cigar tastes like we want to know how it pairs with this uh barrel aged mead creamsicle mead that is i'm a big mead fan i love honey wines I'm gonna do something else kind of uh, while we're going through this pairing of this uh, this meat and the the primordial cigar. I have uh, some about ten little questions here to kind of for you guys to kind of get to know me a little bit. I know uh, there's some of you guys that probably haven't been around as long as as I've been around, um, and there's some of you guys that have been around even longer and know just as much there is to know about me that I could probably ever tell you. So I'm gonna kind of go through some questions. Some are uh, just general get to know you questions. Some of them are. Um, goofy like funny i guess get to know you questions but i figured i would do that so you guys just had a little bit of a better understanding of who's jb and uh why is he sitting in front of this camera I'll tell you what it smells it smells like a sweet honey wine like a sweet mead i don't know that i get a lot of the orange blossom from it
That's really freaking good. Wow. I'm almost wondering if it's too sweet for the cigar, though. I'm going to find out. It really accentuates, or uh, accentuates, really brings out the honey. Kind of reminds me of like a honey, a honey biscuit maybe. Lots of, lots of, it brings out a lot of breadiness of this and it brings out a lot of the honey out of this. Gives it a nice little floral note. I wouldn't say it's an incredible pairing, but it's not bad if you had like a sweet tooth at the end of the night and you were drinking mead and you wanted to smoke something that might kind of pair with it. I almost wonder if the Showtime might taste a little bit better with it. Hmm. All right. So I went and grabbed a Showtime. That primordial is really good though, so I'll be surprised. But I just have a, this has a little bit more vanilla-like sweetness to it. So I wanna see with this shade-grown wrapper and this Dominican tobacco versus the, the Nicaraguan tobacco in the primordial, if maybe it goes just a little bit better with that honey floral orange blossom that we're getting out of that mead. Let's see here. It's actually a little grassier after smoking that primordial and sitting here with the, with the mead. Let me get into this for a minute. We'll go through some of the questions and I wanna see how this pairs with the mead. So a lot of you guys know I'm from Ohio. Uh, I originally grew up in the Dayton area, then moved to the Cleveland area for a little bit of my life and then back down to the Dayton area. Um, I met my wife in college at Heidelberg University, which is in Tiffin, Ohio, which is just north right off, uh, just a little bit south of Lake Erie there, like right between Toledo and Cleveland, essentially. Um, she played softball, I ran track, she played center field. I used to eat my dinner. In, the, in a tree that used to sit down uh, the third base, uh, the third baseline right outside the softball field. I'd sit in a tree and I'd actually eat my dinner and uh, watch the softball games. And then eventually my wife was like, hey, who's the creep in the tree? <clears throat> it's me. And uh, we eventually uh, started seeing each other and went to a couple dates. Uh, first time we went to Chipotle, she ate two burritos. She ate two burritos. Um, and uh, I was like, I'm gonna marry this girl. <laughs> so that's how I met my wife. And then um, we stayed in Ohio for a few years until she finished her degree in finance. And um, I was working at Best Buy and then I got a job at Apple. Um, then we eventually moved out here to Arizona where I worked at Apple for a while. She's in finance, works in the insurance industry. And um, then I went from there to walking into the door here and. We'll go through that story a little bit another time, but I think a lot of you guys know it, but uh, that's kind of my life in a really quick nutshell. First time I ever smoked a cigar was when I was 18 years old. I was on um, the beach in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, right after I graduated uh, high school. It was like me and three of my buddies went on a trip and bought cigars and smoked them on the beach. And then uh, here I am like 15 years later, uh, still smoking cigars and um, still 18 years old <laughs> but let's go through some of these questions so question number one what are your hobbies man i got i got a lot of hobbies but i'm also one of those people that like i'm kind of a hobby jumper am i am i a fair weather hobby person yeah i do a lot i have a lot of different hobbies man i do a lot of different things i um obviously smoking cigars is a hobby a passion of mine i do that a lot um I love uh, hiking, I love being outdoors, um, basketball is probably one of my favorite things to do on the planet. Um, I play a lot of softball right now, so I do that. I grew up riding horses, I love riding horses, I love going out like just on long rides out into like the woods nowhere, finding cows, bringing them out, that kind of stuff. I've done some sorting and some pinning, that was kind of cool. Um, wouldn't consider that a hobby, but it is something that I used to do um, that was pretty fun. Um, I used to ride BMX all the time. I loved riding my pedal bike, loved riding BMX. Sometimes I'll ride it to the shop. It's an old Haro Nyquist X2 back trail. It's red, um, beautiful bike. I love that thing. Um, loved that bike, dude. That thing's got, that had more miles on it 
when I uh, when I had it from like I think I was like 13 till I got my car when I was 16. And I think that bike probably has more miles on it than I put on my 72 Chevelle. Those are some of my hobbies. Question two, do you collect anything? Um, I've collected a lot of things over the years. Uh, I collect cigars, maybe incidentally, maybe on purpose. Either way, I collect them. And uh, some things I've collected in the future, uh, or in the future, I don't know what I'm gonna collect in the future. Some things I've collected in the past are, uh, I used to collect yo-yos. Like lots of different yo-yos, like everything from like X-Brain yo-yos to like just really weird, um, go to like Gatlinburg and buy like a souvenir yo-yo. I don't know. I collected yo-yos. Um, I don't anymore. I don't even have them anymore, but I used to. I used to collect bouncy balls, all kinds of bouncy balls. If I went anywhere and they had a quarter machine to get a bouncy ball out or we went to like Chuck E. Cheese, David, but anywhere I could get like really interesting, weird bouncy balls. I was getting bouncy balls. Don't ask why they sat in the drawer about life. Uh, I've also collected and still have my magic card collection. Um, nerd alert. Um, I also collect records. Uh, I'm really picky about the vinyl that I buy. I have a unique collection. There's a lot of like Billy Joel, a lot of uh, Eminem, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of Elton John. Um, some Ario Speedwagon. I think I have all the first pressings of Ario Speedwagon. Let's take a pause and see if this Showtime actually pairs better with this um, mead than the Primordial. Whoa! Makes it like a dirty cinnamon. Weird. Huh. Dirty cinnamon. Very strange. It's almost like the end of a red hot, but without it burning your mouth, but it's like the flavor of it. Huh. Interesting. I'm gonna go back to the primordial though. We'll go back to these questions. All right, number three. Um, what are some things that you're passionate about? Man, that's a good question. Um, I'm super passionate about uh, people, man. Um, I love helping people, I like being there for people. Um, a lot of my family's been public servants. Uh, I think some of us have callings to just be there and be somebody that's there for people. Um, I'm super passionate about that. That's that's one thing. Um, another thing is I'm super passionate about family, man. I love my family. Obviously, that falls kind of under people, but I love family. I love the people that I surround myself with. Um, that's one of the biggest things. Um, I'm passionate about uh, cigars. Definitely passionate about cigars. I love the different artistic uh, ideologies behind the cigars, the different blends, the different tobacco fermentations, the different t uh, leaves, the different seeds, the different growing regions, the different flavors they produce, and then most of all, um, what they do. The brotherhoods that they create, the conversations they create, the friendships that you get around cigars. There's people that are friends from all over the world that have met up after just being friends for five years over a cigar community that does herfs on the internet. Like, um, what cigars can do is is amazing. It, 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 having a brotherhood that is built around cigars is not a bad thing. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely passionate about cigars. And then um, something that I've become more passionate recently. Um, and I think a lot of you can attest to this as a big thanks to this big guy smiling down on us right here, Mr. Bradley Reith. Um, and that was the fact that uh, he made us all more passionate about Jesus. And I think that's, uh, <laughs> I think that's something that uh, I'm very proud to say, so. Number four, what is the coolest place you've traveled? Oh man, I've traveled, uh, I've been lucky enough to travel some really cool places. Um, Hawaii is one of my favorites, um, but I love Hawaii, I love the culture, I love the the beautiful scenery. Um, that's one of my favorite places to go. Um, but my most favorite, like coolest place I've ever traveled has gotta be when I went to Greece. I mean, I went when I was 10 years old, I'm 33. I still remember it very vividly. Um, I remember my aunts, my my yaya, she was like in her um, 80s at the time. She lived to, to be almost in her hundreds. Um, I remember my uncle's wine, which now he has an actual full winery that he actually uh, sells wine out of and tourists and stuff come to the winery. And um, man, I really loved Greece. Uh, I keep telling my wife, if 
she wants to go. And I keep telling her every time uh, that if we go back, there's a big possibility that JP ain't coming back from the Highlands, bro. Trust me. Lipso, Rodos. Oh, man. <sighs> memories, memories. Number five, tell us about your longest running friendship with someone. Oh man, I'll be honest, if I if I pull you in as a friend, um, like a close friend, you're pretty much family friend for life. That's kind of how it goes. I keep a pretty tight circle and um, the people that get an opportunity to be in that circle are um, people that I care very dearly about. And um, I'll tell you about one. He's not one of my oldest friends, but this is one of the coolest stories to tell. I have a friend named Donnie and um in seventh grade when i moved up to my mom's and lived in the cleveland area uh, I, I ran track and um i was one of the fastest people around pretty much both when i lived in dayton and when i lived in medina i was very blessed with lots of speed so um donnie was one of the best distance runners cross country runners also blessed with some pretty good speed um very talented uh, individual we even played each other at basketball the rivalry kind of started there bled into the uh, track season where he actually uh, beat me at one of my own races, which was the 200 meters. Um, I smoked him on the turn, uh, thought I had it won, uh, and uh, he came passing me like a freaking freight train. And uh, that uh, also ignited the rivalry just a tad because we went to two different middle schools in the same town. So that was kind of fun. And uh, fast forward a little bit, we both get into high school our freshman year and um, we were on the same basketball team together and we still hadn't really developed any kind of a relationship let alone a friendship we just kind of were teammates and understood that we were both uh very fast and very talented and had jobs to do and when we were on the court together we knew what it was but there wasn't much of a conversation afterwards until there was one day we were both sitting into in the bathroom uh doing the old number two at the same time and uh he goes oh no and I went, uh-oh. He's like, I'm out of TP, bro. I was like, no way, dude, you're out of TP. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, no worries, bro, I got you. So I reached over and just started pulling down a bunch of toilet paper. So there was just a pile of it. And he just reached under, grabbed it, and, you know, went about his business. Well, fast forward a couple weeks later, same scenario. Except I'm the one out of toilet paper in the locker room. And guess who's next to me? So it kind of became a ritual before practices and games that uh, we became uh, number two buddies. We'll leave it at that. And uh, he's one of my best friends to this day. Um, we even took a wedding photo where I was handing him toilet paper underneath the uh, the stalls in the in the bathroom. <laughs> I'll see if I can find it. I'll put it up here. But uh, yeah, that's that's one of my uh, longest running friendships. It's pretty cool. Um, I got a lot more. Trust me, I'm leaving people out, and I'm sorry about that. But I like telling that story because it's funny. Mm. I know I switched cigars on you for a minute just because I was curious about how that other one was gonna pair. But this primordial is just so pleasant to smoke as a Connecticut. And you guys know, if you've been watching the channel for any period of time, this guy is not your Connecticut advocate in the slightest. Trust me. But this, very pleasurable. Nice sweetness to it. Doesn't go bad with the meat. It's not a great pairing, but it does work. Yeah, it's not... Not anything super special with the meat, but... It's not off-putting either. So like I said, if you're out having a drink and you just want something light like a meat or something and you want to smoke a cigar, this primordial works, man. It works. All right, question six. What are you most thankful for? Man. Yeah, I'm thankful that, uh, that God brought that man into my life. For sure. Like, that's, <laughs> that's a no-brainer. Um... I'm very thankful for um, the people that I surround myself with, all my friends and family, the people that continually are, are here every day, the people that are out front helping me right now. Um, that's a big one, for sure, definitely. Um, super thankful for my family, super thankful for uh, cigars, and um, yeah, man, I'm thankful for my wife. Man, there's so much to be thankful for. We don't have enough time for that. but. Uh, Extremely thankful, that's for sure. Thankful for you guys. Very thankful for you guys. Don't uh, <laughs> don't leave that out, trust me. You guys are amazing, appreciate it. Number seven, what is the greatest challenge or struggle you have ever faced? Man, I think right now is definitely one of them. Um, yeah, 
now is definitely one of them. This is, uh, I wouldn't say it's a struggle, but it's a challenge. It's different and it's uh, unique in a lot of different ways. Um, I would say some other challenges that I faced in the in the past were just um, self self challenges with like mental mental health, right? Like uh, self doubt, um, feeling like you know um, you're not good enough. The things that you're not doing are good enough, right? Like that was probably one of my hardest things um, that I went through about four years ago, and uh, four and a half years ago, and you know coming here into this job and doing this and smoking cigars and talking with the big guy every day brad and the other big guy every day uh you know that's uh that's what got me through that but i think right now is um definitely one of the bigger challenges that i got in front of me moving forward and i can't be more excited to do it <laughs> that's for damn sure tell us an embarrassing story man i got so many embarrassing stories i don't even know where to start I think one of the most embarrassing stories though happened right here with you guys when uh, I stuck the lit end of a cigar into my mouth. <laughs> uh, that was pretty embarrassing. That was a big bonehead mistake. Uh, it sucked. My mouth tasted like burnt hot ash for like three or four days. Um, yeah, that was a weird one, man. I uh, yeah, there's there's also plenty of stories like going to Cedar Point and. Uh, trusting a bodily function that normally involves gas and there was liquids involved. We'll just leave it at that, sorry. A number nine, what is the strangest food combination you enjoy? Uh, I like to blend things, I like to mix foods. I love some good baked beans mixed into some macaroni and cheese. I love to like take my corn and mix it into my mashed potatoes so the corn doesn't run away. Um, I've also been known to uh, make a Miracle Whip and cheese sandwich from time to time. Well, the last question, question number 10. This one's kind of fun. What emoji do you use most often? Um, it's probably the middle finger. Yeah, probably the middle finger, followed by the, the shaka. Uh, lots of middle fingers. We'll just leave it at that. But this primordial cigar, one of my favorite Connecticut's. Very, very good. I would say, if, like I said, at the end of the night, if you want to smoke this with a nice lighter bourbon or something like a mead, um, you definitely, definitely could get away with smoking this with that. Very good. It's not the most amazing pairing in the world, but it did work. This cigar on its own, though, I typically thoroughly enjoy. I've actually been wanting to do this video for two days, and I've done a couple different ones. And... Um, just because I really wanted to smoke this cigar because I really like it and I haven't had one for a while. So uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what you think of some of my questions. You can also answer some of those questions on your own if you want to. I would love to hear some of those stories. Um, also, have you smoked the Primordial Connecticut? Um, and if not, you should try it. You should also try its older brother, the Maduro, where this is like the cookie dough. That one's like brownie batter. Super great cigar, very good Maduro. And um, if you haven't tried them, you should and if you have tried them let me know what you thought of it and with that guys i gotta get going i got stuff to do i'm out of here like last year peace